What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to an all-new Tatro live stream. Thank you for joining me, and thank you for your patience. I know I'm a little bit late, and despite the spam in the chat that you see from Joseph McCaffrey, it is indeed his fault. What do I want to do right before we go live on stream? I want to pick up a drink. I want to be chill for this session. Get a nice matcha going. I extend a friendly courtesy. I say, do you want something from Starbucks, Joe? Oh, yes, he does. Okay, perfect. Give him my phone. Does he place the order? No, of course not. So now I place the order minutes later. Finally, we get there. They're sold out of his drink. There's just an empty cup there, as if he's supposed to drink the air. And then we have to sort that all out. So it is indeed Joseph's fault. Um, and by extension, uh, Jin Sol Kong's fault in the chat. Annyeonghaseyo. Thank you for being here, everybody. Welcome. Um, we're making indie pop today, all jokes aside. And what's unique about today... Actually, let me do this. Nope, I don't hear anything. I've got some sounds loaded up already. So we're going to hit the ground running today. I've got synth sounds. I thought I had synth sounds. That's a good one. How about this one? Yeah. We got bass lines. We got chord instruments i think yes we're ready it's indie pop like retro 80s inspired that's what i'm going with today so i i um loaded up a bunch of synths analog lab a lot of that we're gonna be having some fun today so thank you all i want to say hello to everybody who is in the chat patiently waiting hello william c beckham drunk bishop um, shout out to all the members, of course, like Drunk Bishop with cool badges next to their name. I've never caught a Tatro stream before, says Samuel Roth. Very excited. Samuel, welcome. If this is your first uh, Tatro stream live, please let me know in the chat. Also, if you're watching this later, leave a comment down below. My dad is here as well. Uh, Peanut Butter, hello. Nice member badge on you as well. Hank Hill, Sav X, Jacob Marino. Um, Edo, Edo Juke Beat. Hello, thank you for being here. Omega, Amelia S, what's good? Amelia S, your badge is evolving even more. We love to see that. Rainer, Rainer says, I'm a new kid in town. Hey, what's up, new kid? Fernando, I'm well, thank you for asking. Um, I think we're going to have a good stream today. Drummy Geo, thank you for being here. Boz, thank you for being here. And Elliot, Elliot, it's your first stream? Amazing. Well, thanks. Um, what do I have going on here today? I've got my launch key 37, which I think that shot is out of focus. Let's fix that. Should we cut to the wide? Press that. Ah, there we go. Now that'll be in focus. Boom. I just wanted a lot of keys today. So we got 37 of them. And the Dawes Ableton Live, as usual. Cambria says, also my first live. Great. So a little bit about the process here. I've got some friends coming and visiting over the next week. Uh, one of them is an artist that I've worked with before. And she has made me a playlist. We're going to work on a song is, is the, uh, the whole setup here. We're going to work on a song. She made me a, a Spotify playlist of some reference music, which I'm not going to play on stream, of course, because of copyright um, but if you want to take a look at some of the references here it's a sort of a mix between um, indie pop um, you know this Anna of the North track is really good we've got some of the neighborhood um, and then we've got some more you know typical sort of pop stuff with a lot of Dua Lipa on here a little tinge of Ariana Grande Harry Styles um, and it's a cool collection of sounds. It fits in the tantrum. You know, some of the, some of this stuff is like your typical like sync music, like especially M83 and like fits in the tantrums. It's like straight out of any commercial you've seen in the past 10 years. Um, but it's got this like 80s retro inspired thing, but then it's also got this like kind of indie pop rock vibe to it. So if you all just scan this list, if you recognize any songs, cool. If not, maybe pick one, go check it out and see what we're working with today. So I've been just... Listening to that playlist, trying to get a feel for it, trying to figure out what um, what elements to combine. And of course, what I end up with is a collection of sounds that sort of are, you know, what, what can I say? It's not like, um, they all fit that vibe. They all fit, they either have a sort of retro-y kind of vibe to the synths, or they have like an indie 
uh, band sensibility to them. Oh, Kamikaze Shot says, great MixCon interview. Thank you. MixCon was a lot of fun yesterday. Thank you for everybody who uh, tuned into that. Uh, Max SO says, you are the reason I bought a launch key mini. Cheers to that. Daft Banana, welcome to your first live. Thanks for hanging. So yeah, we have a blank slate here. Not completely blank though, because like I said, I've got some instruments we're working with here. Um, what do I have? I have some serum. That's just like a deep re-space. Followed by, I did this earlier today, so I don't really remember. This is like a, probably the main synth that we'll use for like the chords. We love that. That's like 80s, but modern at the same time. We got this kind of lead synth to play with. And you know, these are all just like colors in the palette. We don't have to use them all. Again, a lot of these are analog lab. I'll bring up the plugin window. Of course, like basically sorting by classic synth keys for some of these, which makes it really easy. And a lot of uh, Juno, the Juno synth. I really like this chord uh, synth as well. That's nice. This is not usually part of my process. Usually I just go in completely blank. Um, but today I wanted to just prepare. And of course, I've got some clean guitar. Which this is a uh, contact guitar band. It's a good sounding guitar. I've got some chorus on there. I don't know why I have this effects rack doubled, but it doesn't need to be. Um, and then just some electric bass. I was going to play live bass today, but I think there's an issue with one of the pickups in my actual bass. In which case, I'm going to find my real electric bass instrument. That is not this one. Um, but yeah, you can probably hear a little bit of noise from that synth. Some of these synths are like analog emulated, so they have noise on them. That's yeah, this one. Which one is that? It's that mellow drops one. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to leave that muted for now so we don't hear too much of the noise. I think it's on that one as well. So yeah, lots of smooth sounds coming today. CG, uh, CJL Caleb, welcome. Glad the uh, algorithm is in my favor today. Brian says, I'm late. Don't worry, I was late too. Fernando says, I tried to apply the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half technique with my guitar, and I managed to play all major scales without consulting any tab. Just want to say thank you for teaching us music theory in a simple way. Fernando, I really appreciate hearing that. I am glad that you took the information and translated it to your instrument, because guitar is actually a little bit easier than uh, keyboard to conceptualize, like half steps, because all the frets are equal. On a piano, you have black keys and white keys. It makes it seem different. But on a guitar, it's just a little easier. Black sheet, don't worry about being late. Welcome. We're just getting started. Of course, the last thing I'm going to point out is that I have this new plugin that I got um, from ADSR like a week ago. But it's a very good drum set. Um, So it's a good drum set plugin. Uh, what I really like about it though is that there are patterns in it. So obviously we're at, you know, 160 right now, which we don't need to be. So let me just bring that down. You can see a tempo right there. Uh, this is by UGM, which they're pretty cool. So nice acoustic drum sounds. I probably won't stick to strictly acoustic drum sounds, but we, we might use a combination of both. And just so you can see how this works, like with these patterns, th that's MIDI. So I can just click and drag that in. Now I have full control over all those hits. But it's still a nice natural sounding drum pattern because they've paid so much attention to the velocity and all that. Something I would not be able to do playing it in. So just laying the land of what we're working with today. I'm also noticing, back to talking about that reference playlist, like 
I would say at least 50% of those tunes have tambourine in them. So I'm going to use this other, um, this other UGM plugin, which is not like sponsored or anything, but they're pretty cool, um, to drop in some tambourine. And this works the same way as the previous one. where it's got that tambourine uh, MIDI that we can just drop in. So think about that. Like this is a tambourine sound that is combining, uh, what is it? Yeah, two different sounds to make a natural, or three different sounds to make a natural sounding tambourine thing, which is cool. But I got to think of the tempo. I want it to be a little bit fast paced, like sort of like an 80s, like power, power tune, one, two, three. Four. So that uh, tambourine pattern isn't going to work, but there's a less busy one, which we might come back to. I'm not going to lay it down just yet, but for now, why don't we lay down a chord progression? Where's that chord synth that I said I really liked? I think it was a serum actually. Yeah, let's lay down chords. I just want to do something simple. I think we'll play in the key of D today. A very poppy key, I guess you could say. And um, let's let it roll. As usual, as if you all have questions, comments, whatever, you just want to chat, please leave it in the chat. I'll be checking with you all um, as we go. So thank you for being here today. Um, haven't been able to sit down and make stuff in a while due to my job and moving, but can't wait till I finally have some downtime. Star stuff, I feel you. Moving is a nightmare, um, and that sucks up a lot of your free time, so... It will feel so good when you're able to have, um, when you're able to have free time. Uh, the counselor says, frankly, I think Tetro could play it in that. Well, I don't think so. It's like, uh, it's just like frustrating to try to do that. Slime vibes. No worries for being late. Everybody's so concerned with being late, but they don't know that I was late. Well, without that wrong note, that doesn't sound too bad. Why don't we go ahead and listen to the tempo? Could we do something like that? Three, four, one, two, three. Three, four, one, two. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Let me see if I can remember what I just played actually and record it. Not quite, it was close though, right? See, the problem is we've got this seventh chord here, which if those of you have been following along with the theory tutorials, this is kind of the next step of that. I told you how to make a triad in those tutorials. One, three, five, but we had a note on top. That's a seven, which sounds really good on that four chord. Oh yeah, I, I did say I was gonna play in D, didn't I? If I play that four chord, that sounds really good. Um, if I play the one chord, that sounds really good with a seven in it. If I go up to this B, doesn't sound amazing, right? Doesn't sound like the harmony we're looking for. But I don't think it sounds too bad. Yeah, I'll avoid that. So let's lay in this chord progression, but in the right key. I know I've been messing around with keys today. I kept going back to C, but I want to play this in D. Do you know the names of the chords uh, that I'm playing? Yes. If you watch the music theory tutorial too, you will know as well. So what was I trying to do? We were starting on the four. 
And re remember, I'm using those numbers four, five, six, instead of saying, uh, you know, G7. See, because it's B minor, the seven actually does sound good. But on the five, it doesn't sound that good. So I'll play it just major. Let's keep going. All right, I'm running with time again. I got to put the metronome on so I can actually hear the pace of what we're doing. What's up, Karina? And we'll add bass notes in later. I don't want to be stuck on doing chords for the first like half hour of the stream. So I'm just going to lay something down and if we can make it better, we can make it better. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I don't love that. One more time. Three, four. It's just not the same essence of what I was doing before. I think I was going faster. That is what it is for sure. Um, let's try that again. Actually, but let's record that in arrangement view. All right, try it one more time. anticipated one that one chord this is closer to what I want yes okay we're so close I just need to feel it and hear the song in my head it's a different feel one two three four dun, dun, dun. You hear that anticipation? Good. I'm going to just clean that up because I'm overplaying this now. Uh, somebody asked what plugin I'm using. I'm using Serum for the sound. It's the saw pluck. I think this is a 1975 preset pack. Um, so, what you will notice, I was kind of grappling with is the timing and how I wanted these chords to fall. And what you might notice is some of these actually are coming in before the downbeats, not this one. But these are. Good. And this should be a solid A chord, which I want to um, just double the bass. Get that bass note down here. And I actually like this cluster chord of a one that showed up. So I'm going to duplicate this and make it a uh, full on um, long loop. Let me extend this chord. So it's just a little bit different the second time around. Then we're good. All right, consolidate that. We have our chord progression. That took me a lot longer than usual. I think it's because I was playing in C and then I was like, I want to play in D and I had to get my fingers uh, adjusted. Two, 
So you hear that chord is like a little more vague and less straightforward. Now, I am curious to just get a quick drum groove going, even if, you know, some of these are not um, going to be the final drums, just to get a basic feel going. I like that kick flutter, but I'm going to take the basic verse version first. And then we'll probably put some guitar over it. But I just want some basic drums for now, and I want to focus on the musical elements, then I'll go back in. And what this also has is fills too, so I would love to throw a fill in here. Hello. So we can throw in those little fills. What's this one sound like? No. I kind of like that one. Let's do that one the first cycle through. Is that the same one? Yes. This sound pretty good. I like that one because it has low tom. So I'll do like these little. That's nice. Starts off, I saw your comment about trying to um, not make the same thing over and over again. A lot of that comes down to just your habits. Um, so one of the reasons I really do enjoy controllerism is because every controller is different, provides a different approach. That can be as simple as say, I'm using um, I'm using a 37 key keyboard today versus a mini 25 key keyboard, which might influence the type of music that I'm making. Or if I pick up a pad controller versus a key controller, controller that's gonna break my habits from, my, from the keys. I'm gonna have a totally different approach. So there's, there's the element of the tools that you use that could be different. That can help break your habits. Um, even if you have like a MIDI keyboard, just try to not use the MIDI keyboard. Try just punching things in on MIDI. You'll come up with different things. Or just start with a different element instead of starting with chords like you do all the time. Just start with drums or vice versa. I'm gonna put a little re room reverb on this. Push it a little further back in the mix. What's up, William C. Beckham? You're back, you were here earlier. All right, this is a good start to a song. We haven't made it that far, obviously, but... Um, I think adding some guitar on top of this will help us. You know what it needs? More reverb for sure. Bigger reverb. Yes, let me go ahead and get some rid of some of the lows though. Let's shed this just because this sounds pretty good. Um, let's give it a shot. I'm just going to keep recording um, and maybe we'll get something good.
So I'm trying to do lots of long tones because I want it to sound like a natural guitar. So definitely holding down a pedal note here. And not make trying trying to make it sound like it's not too much of a keyboard. So that's why some of these those I tend towards because it's like bending or you know hammer on hammer off kind of thing. Doesn't sound totally natural. It's so close. Mm. So you just kind of hear what I'm going for there. That was the closest we're going to get, especially with those little licks in the second half. So I might do a little bit of cleaning that up. However, I was in the zone on that one, I think. So the thing I want to be careful about is I don't want to lose that, that feel in there. That's an extra note. We don't need that. But I will go ahead and quantize some of the notes that do fall on, or are supposed to be falling on a clean down beat. These. Like this is obviously supposed to be here on the one. Uh, this I want to be there as well. So that sounds like a strummed chord basically, and I can make them a little off the grid just to get that slight strummed effect. Not that off though. Very close. And that is way too fast. So let's bump that over. That is where quantization is failing us. I honestly would have been better off just playing it um, or just not quantizing it because this rhythm is not quite there. Boom, gotta. I wonder if it's that note. It's that note. That's the issue. There it is. Okay. Boom. There we go. All right, we've got that lead guitar now. All right, I'm, I'm liking that lead guitar for now. Let's let that run. And let me get my um, electric bass sound here. Right there. And let's just add a quick bass line. Nothing too serious. The one thing I want to avoid is having this be too much of like a band tune, like a rock tune. So I'm going to try to put in some elements that are um, maybe more pop electronic coming up. Like especially swapping out these drums for something a little more pop electronic or at least layering them with some electronic drums will help that. Let's do a bass line. One, two, three, four.
I forget the chord progression is different. I'm not syncing up with the chords very well. Um, quantize that. I'm gonna have to fix this. I actually want to copy that rhythm. Da da da. Let's have that be constant. Dun, dun, dun. And I'm just looking at this rhythm to make sure it's on the right beat. It's like here. So see how this note should have come in anticipated. That one was late. And then this one was earlier, early. Because I messed with myself on the chords. Some notes were anticipated, some were on the downbeat. Cool. All right, now we have a bass line. Again, I'm not agonizing over these ideas. I want to get the initial song. Um, Kind of just down the basic ideas. Matt Ott says, Sounds great already. Thank you. Jim Saul snapping. We love that. How did you configure Ableton to do the metronome tempo before recording? I tapped in it, heard the song in my head, I snapped it, and I tapped four times. Not like heard the song in my head, but like heard the tempo, the basic groove that I want to go go for. All right, is there a synth layer that we can add now? Not not that. Maybe a lead of some sort. Something in the background. This could work. I don't feel like that sounds indie enough, you know what I mean? This could work, but let me just figure it out. Maybe it needs a little more reverb to match. Good. All right, that's close. I just don't want it to conflict too much with the uh, electric guitar. Common Beats, thanks for hanging out. I'm just not trying to like overplay this. Let's record that. Two, three, four. Let's not play terribly. Simpler.
Easy. Like that. That's fine for now. Okay. This we should have no problem quantizing. I stand corrected. Let me just check my quantize settings. That can be eighth notes. Thank you. Oh, uh, somebody was at uh, the question what about the metronome had to do with the count in. You can literally just go here, preferences, recording, and count in. That is why it gives me four beats before I record. You can set it up to four bars or have none, but it should default. I, I don't know why. I think it's def it defaults for people to none, but I would definitely recommend you have a one bar count in on. All right, what is, um, I think it's drum time. So what I really want to do, with peace and love to these drums, they're fine. I think it's time to add some sort of, um, you know, 80s electronic drums. Hey, Kaden has become a member, new member. Thank you, Kaden. Welcome to the community. Thank you. At that tier, you can join our Discord, which is really amazing, which means you can submit music for the upcoming track review stream, which we're doing on Saturday. So if you do want to submit music for that stream, become a member, hit join at any tier. If you want a free sample pack, join at the VIP tier, and you get a free sample pack, you join the Discord, uh, you get to submit music, all that good stuff. Track feedback, free sounds, all that. Part of a cool community, you know. I'm doing well, Ed. Thanks for asking. Thanks for joining as well. We're having a good time making this track, I think. It's kind of diverging a little bit from the inspiration material, but... Now, can I search by 80s drums is my question. Future nostalgia. 80s synthwave. Hmm. See, this is where going into a pack will help us because... Splice's search is not amazing. So if I type in 80s, it's gonna give me 80s BPM, uh, 80 BPM tracks. Let me see what we have for one shots in this kit. Really, no one shots in this kit. Okay, no thanks then. Um, no bueno. Let me try again, 80s, not 808. My fingers just automatically type 808. All right, this is called Scavenger Hunt, Future Nostalgia, which I think is cool. Could be what we're looking for. Go to drums. I am 100% going to mute that synth that is playing that noise in the background. Don't worry. I think it's track. This one? This one. Cool. All right, yeah. Opening up Splice again. Let's pick some drums. Again, the idea here is I want some... That, that clap could work really well as a uh, sort of like a fill. Tap, tap, tap. We get that in here. Oops, let me actually put it on a track. So I'm just taking samples, dumping them into live as we go. I wish this wasn't so big. There we go. That's not a bad snare. I don't know if it'll work as a full snare, but we'll see. Mm, I don't know why I downloaded that. Not a bad kick. Let's drop that in. Not a bad snare. What do you guys think of these samples? See, this one's more dry, so it might be a little safer. So we'll call that one. Same with this kick. This kick is a little, little less intense than the other one. And I will, of course, grab this tom just in case, but this seems to be like the basics right now. That is what I'm looking for. Well, not to play all those sounds at once, but to now uh, build up this drum pattern. I'm going to go ahead and mute the drum set 
keep the uh, tambourine though. Bumch, bumbunch, bumch, bumbunch. That's what we're going for. Let me get the first snare in here because that's going to help. I just want to put that on two and four. Is it this one? Could be that one. Could be that one. No, it's this one. Let's get that on the twos and the fours. And we'll have our initial groove going here with drums. And I'm going to see like how layering the two together, the acoustic drums and the electronic drums sounds. Because I might, might especially want it for the fills. I just want to be careful. Look at the sample. Come on. Come on. We can do better than that, Splice. With peace and love. I know making sample packs is like such tedious work. That's why it's so hard for me to get them out regularly. To just clean up all the files, title all the files. It's like a nightmare. All right. So I'm just putting snare on two and the four so I can build my kick around it. Go, 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 go. Come on. And this is easy amateur hour over here. That's it. I'm just going to copy this pattern and then kind of make variations on it across the timeline. And honestly, I'm working in a 16 bar loop, which kind of is annoying. So I'll probably like make a four bar pattern that I copy across. Like add one more hit here. Add one more hit here. And then one more hit here. And now what I'll do is I'll highlight this whole eight bar pattern because it just has a little bit of variation through it, right? I will highlight this whole pattern if I can get it all on screen. Do you guys notice my magnification on Ableton is bigger? Because ever since switching to the 13 inch MacBook Pro, like sitting this far away from the screen, it's a bit of a, it's kind of far. Jeremy says, I would love to see you build a sample pack. It is such a tedious process and it's not something I want to like stream. I, maybe like one day, like maybe like a members only stream or something more low key. But it's so tedious and I don't do it all in one sitting. That's for sure. It's a lot of trial and error. Um, oh, well, if nothing else, I got a good ear. Nice. Have I had Joe time yet? No. It's only if I have to go to the bathroom. I'm gonna kill the guitar for now. Well, if I ever do that, Jeremy, I will uh, make a big announcement for it. The drums are kind of loud. Okay, and the thing I wanted to do with the clap, 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 clap. That's all. Four claps. Like this. Faster. Twice that speed, though. I think. Unless it's twice this speed. I mean, that doesn't sound terrible, but I want twice that speed. This is sort of just like a typical 80s thing at this point, right? Only three. Good. And this needs its own reverb on it because you see what I'm doing there and cutting off the sample. Sample has a reverb tail, but to put them next to each other like that, it's getting cut. And I don't feel like making separate tracks for three of the same clap. So, I will put reverb on it.
Easy. Spam asks, how often do I stream? I stream a talk show on Tuesdays. We usually have an interview or a call-in show, or we do a sample challenge on Tuesdays. Um, I stream every Thursday, which is just the general music making. And then on Saturdays, uh, every other Saturday, I stream a track review stream. I love everything. I think I really love the fills for this, which I will keep. With the fills, though, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the kicks. And maybe even the snares. And just pull fills from this. And just use toms. I also stream on Wednesdays with ADSR. Don't forget that, my friends. Okay, let's check this. Um, yeah, I really like these. I do like the snare, though. Okay, okay. I am a legend, what's good? Thanks for joining my friend. Spam says, cool, thanks. I just bought my own Akai MPK Mark III. I'm excited to make stuff, awesome, yeah. I've done a couple of music theory tutorials that you should for sure check out. Plenty of just like general beat making tutorials as well. All right, this is fun. It's just like a kind of a basic loop now. I think it sounds closer. Like, remember, that playlist that I'm referencing... Let me just cut this camera for a minute. Um, that playlist that I'm referencing, it's it's a tough one. It's tough working with artists and they have a collection of, of music like this. I want to I wanna lean more into the Dua Lipa style stuff because there's a few Dua Lipa songs on here, so we know that that's definitely of interest. And then there's that other... Um, the other side of things that is more of the acoustic, like the Harry Styles songs, got acoustic guitar. Some of these have, you know, elect I mean electric, like clean electric guitar and all that. So I want to make sure that I'm in the right ballpark with this. But I think what it is now, the next step is to just start thinking about arrangement. Hey, James Murley says, thanks for the great feedback and good vibes. Hey, I appreciate that. James, thank you so much for the super chat. It means a lot. Bender says, I bought M Audio Oxygen Pro Mini. Will you do a review on it? Probably not. Do do a leap up, please. Love today's stream, by the way. Yeah, so a lot of Dua Lipa's current stuff has some 80s reference in it, but I think what we probably need... Let me just remember some of these sounds that I picked, because I already did some of the work. That's fine. See, that's more... Something like our, basically like arpeggio like that could work, but with more reverb. Get that low out of there. Drummy Geo, have Starbucks on me. Thank you so much. You guys are coming in clutch with the super chats. Appreciate that. Ed, James, Drummy Geo, thank you all. Is deep royalty free? Yes. Thank you, Quentin Lee, for that super chat. I appreciate it. You guys are all so nice with these super chats today. I Am Legend says, uh, enjoying someone else's process. I don't understand a thing about Ableton. Um, what DAW do you use, I Am Legend? 
Um, let us know. Oh, let me lay that down. I came up with that idea, and then you guys were saying all these nice things, and I forgot it. So, see if I can do this. It's so close. It's so close. I think I want to do that. It's like a tongue twister. That is it. That one loop that I just did there. That four bar loop is what I want. If I can play it once, we're good. Throw that in there. Quantize, get rid of that extra note. Machine to produce Logic Garage Band or Code Robles. Yeah, cool. Man, I can't. The machine workflow. First of all, I also have loaded machine in Ableton before. And like I was doing this maybe a week ago or something. And the undo history. This is like a nightmare situation. The undo history. If you are running machine as a VST in Ableton Live. Say you drop machine in there, you're working with it, you're working with in machine and you're building tracks within machine as a VST in Ableton Live. Say you add a baseline or something, or you get three layers in, you're on chords now, drums, bass, chords, and you make a mistake in the chords or something, and you quickly just hit undo to get rid of it. The undo history is actually Ableton Live's undo history. So what you end up undoing, the last thing you did in Ableton Live usually is put machine in as a vst so you hit undo it takes machine out as a vst instead of undoing what you did in machine and then it's gone you can't go back like it doesn't reload with all the like settings again so you lose the whole beat so frustrating vanider says where are the blackpink stickers hello are you paying attention it's rose right there But um, Star Stuff was asking about like habits and stuff. And the reason, even though sometimes I loathe the machine workflow or just like other workflows other than Ableton, sometimes I do like to go work in machine or work on machine because all these habits that I've built up in Ableton Live might not be good or like just might just get stale. So I go work with another tool, work in another program. Okay, so this is enough to get me started on like an actual track, I think. So now on this workflow here, the move is, you all have seen me do this a hundred times. I'm literally going to cut this and move it way over here. And we're gonna start building up a song structure. Now, what should we start with? Starting with chords is kind of easy. But I wonder if there's another instrument worthy of these chords. That doesn't sound bad, but what if I do this melody? So we could have that build in probably, probably. Okay, so I think, obviously I'm gonna play with some filters here, but I think this first eight bars is the intro. 
Hey Joe, this is the sort of why I'm watching. I've been considering other dolls as well. Ableton is at the top of my list because all my friends use it. Yeah, that's that's invaluable to be like around people that are using it. And also like um, if a lot of people use a DAW, especially people on the internet who teach, then you're just going to have more resources to be able to figure out how to do what you want to do. So did everybody see that? I took that melody line and put it on this other synth here and we'll probably filter it in. So we filter that synth in here. Okay, I think that comes down a octave. Yep, all right, let's just draw that automation in for now because we know that that's gonna happen here. Okay, okay. Um, and then the drums will have to come in. Let me just think more about this. I think there is an instrument missing that I need. Like I need a different chord instrument. That's too low, but I kind of, I always hit this button now, guys. On the new Mac OS, there's like a hotkey for emojis. But I wonder if this actually filters in as well. Wait, what did I just do? So this could filter in with those other chords happening. This works. And your zone says, is this FL Studio? No, it's Ableton Live. And that is also in the title. So see what I'm doing here? I'm kind of layering these chords in. All right, and then I want to hit the ground running with some drums. So um, here we go. I'm going to I'm duplicating this just so I can go into these patterns and consolidate the drums. So the drums are all now these chopped little one shots that look so annoying. Instead of having them like that, let's consolidate them into clips. And then I'll just drag the clips around. Hi, Yukima. Thanks for being here. Uh, highlight with some bells as sugar, potentially, Rainer. Leandro, two questions. I think I lost in the chat. How did you find new preset sample packs? Um, new preset sample packs. Well, I am fortunate enough to work with ADSR, who has lots of cool um, preset packs and sample packs, especially for some contemporary style artists. So their store is a good source of that for me, though so just, just putting it out there, um, full disclosure, that I get a lot of it for free because I work with them. Um, but also, like, I'm really into the 1975, right? So I just Google, like, 1975, like, serum presets or something like that, and I have this whole pack, um, Drive Like It's 1975, and they're all, like, inspired presets. People are out there making stuff, so if you Google around, you might be able to find something. Um, I am legend. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Thanks. Everybody, please go subscribe to uh, I am legend's channel. I appreciate that, my friend. Thanks. You didn't have to do that. Oh, what just happened to my ears? All right, and see, we're hitting the ground running with some of this, um, some of this drum situation and that's why I wanted a different all right and where is my 
the certain synth that I want. Not that one. That's the one. This is almost like the midnight. I don't know if anybody's a fan of the midnight. And we definitely need the bass here as well. Bass can come right in. Let's duplicate that. So that's kind of the verse here. We're actually coming up with something. I can't say enough how much, like, I'll get to a point in a tune where I make the 8 or 16 bar loop, and I'm like, man, I don't know if this is worth anything. But then once I get to the, um, when I get to the arrangement stage is when I'm like, oh, okay, this can actually be something. I think I might want to redo the bass line here for this verse, just to have it be a little more distinct. Um, let's do that. What is up, Hunty, in the chat? All right, let's do this, two, three, four. Not quite. See, this is why playing the bass is better. Good. Um, the only thing I messed up was the timing on the last notes, which I will fix. that note over. Good. And that those claps coming in there, that's clutch. So to just recap, we have an intro and we have a verse. Let's hear how this came out. Oscar says, this is so groovy. Thank you. Is this pre-recorded or is it live? Manu, it's live. Welcome. Locked on guitar. Thanks for joining in. Hello. Hi, right, what key are you writing this in? D major, Drew. Hey, everybody. If this is your first Tatro live stream, let us know in the chat so the community can welcome you. If you don't know or if you're new here, I stream multiple times a week. We're definitely here every Thursday making music. You can become a member of this channel and join our Discord. If you become a VIP member, you get a free sample pack. If you become a member at any tier, you can submit music to my track feedback streams, which happen every other Saturday. There's one coming up this Saturday. So if you want to get in on Discord and submit music to get reviewed this Saturday, um, become a member, join, submit music, and come hang, with, hang out with us on Saturday night. This old Ableton Live. No, this is new Ableton Live. Finally caught a live show. Very cool so far. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. Big Eastern says first one for me. Uh, Cooper, very nice words. You're awesome, man. Really appreciate what you're creating here. Thank you. Appreciate that. Max Moser, thanks for being here. Now, we did have some guitar originally, remember? So I wonder if we can bring that back in. But to me, it was just sounding a little too like 1975-ish. Cody Ray, thank you so much for becoming a member. Cody Ray, new member, welcome. And you're a VIP member, which means if you go to the community tab on my channel right now, you will find a post that has the Haze sample pack link for free download as a new VIP member. You get access to that immediately. I 
All right, that guitar that I just played, I think was pretty good. Does it capture MIDI? It's like when you aren't like, okay, let's record. One, two, ready, go. It's when you're just like noodling around that you get the best ideas. Where should I start with learning finger drumming? Jag, my beginner finger drumming tutorial. That's where you should start. And then maybe consider getting melodics. All right, we did it. Somehow, we did it. Um, I'm just gonna like do this though. I think it makes sense. Just displace that melody. See what I did? I just kind of grabbed a piece of the melody and moved it over and it'll sound like a little bit different. Cool. All right, I like this. Who knows if the artist will like it, but I like it. What's the most important tip you can give for making melodies? Um, literally study all your favorite songs that have good melodies in them and write down why you like them. If you can't put into words why you like them, then you get to study the language. There's lots of like music theory stuff out there on melodies. We need Carly Jepsen to hop on this beat. <laughs> good Hunter, yes, very good. download the pack i use ableton 2 i love the sound of what you're producing now and we'll be tuning in for a lot awesome thank you so much cody ray welcome to the squad you got that cool badge next to your name as you can see like other people's badges have evolved over time it's a cool family we got going on here okay so now we absolutely need a pre-chorus section um Again, I need to move all this stuff over. This is like my junk pile chat. Like this is all there for me to pull from because we still haven't used all the synth sounds yet by any means. So I just keep all those ideas hidden over there because now we have to do something like a new section. Oh, that's the wrong key. I keep playing in the wrong key. Now where do we go? I mean, doing a weird harmony thing like that could be cool though. Um, that's not the synth I want, I don't think. This could work. Okay, let's try that. So again, the thing that I'm looking to do here is, actually, give me the tambourine. We can use the tambourine here. Thing that I'm looking to do here is build a pre-chorus. Uh, so I want to depart from the material in the verse. We want something new here, basically. And then we'll probably come back to the same chord progression for the chorus, but we'll see. All right, and I'm just going to put this here for feel at the moment. We'll just do four bars at a time. So what sounds good coming off of this? I'm going to try this. Sounds kind of lame. I don't want to do like an F major thing there. Hmm. 
I'm trying to think of the best way to go. I think it's going to be just like kind of a simplified version of the original chord. So let's run that with a metronome. Just try it, but play the right notes. Two, three, four. What's up, Tala? Actually, I like it with that note on top. That's the chord. Slowly but surely figuring this out here. Bruh. It's like amateur hour. We got this G chord, and then we gotta go to a D. That's what I want. Put that nine in there. I think I can do that. Oh. without some of the annoying wrong notes, that can work. And again, we're gonna be layering this. We can tell that that's a wrong note. Um, I know I have another, like a Reese bass in here. Let's switch to that for this section. Maybe. Uh, true, a sustained pedal would solve my problem, Manu, but it's somewhere. I just don't keep it plugged in. All right, baseline. Oh my gosh, can I count? Probably not. Something simple and easy. Again, we're just switching that bass on there. Anything to make this section kind of stick out on its own. Probably won't keep that. Um, that uh, tambourine has probably got to go. Let's see if some uh, that senses fail. Let's go here, here. Dun, dun, dun. Wait, did I miss a new member? I don't think so. Family, exactly. All right, this doesn't sound bad for a pre-chorus, but I think we can build it up more. Um, we're gonna do more of this chord layering thing, I think, because we wanna bring in our big bright synth. And we'll definitely need something arpeggiated. So we'll do more of this filtering.
honestly, this tempering not gonna happen here, so. Um, where's the good arpeggiated thing? That's a good arpeggiated sound. Can't forget that that's what we're headed, heading towards. Should we have that there? Be a brighter reverbery version of that, though. Okay. Good, and this is where our drum fills will come in handy as well, because we're gonna fill right into a chorus. Boom, bring that over here. Again, pulling from the junk pile. And why don't we do that? Do you sing, says Menu, yes. We need one other element, my friends. What is the missing element? Distance gotta do something. That's it, right? Da -da -dun -dun, da -da -da -dun. I'll do up. Like that but I think only halfway through like this a lot of people saying vocal chop my only issue with vocal chop is I would rather do it later after I would rather do a vocal chop after I do work with the vocalist because Vocal chops can sometimes occupy that lead space and I need to save room for vocalists. So which is why I should be even more cautious right now about adding more of these leads. What's up Nefertiti? I will add bass guitar there. Oh, halfway. Here we go. 
Where does it go? Where does it go? Oh, I'm always knocking the mic. Does it make a terrible noise for you guys when I always like smack the mic? I apologize. Um, hello everybody. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for hanging out with me on stream today. We're having a good time. We're coming up on 90 minutes, but I want to get a basic structure of this down before we sign off today. I don't know why the wide cam is so blue. Something to do with the white balance. All right. That's not the button. This is the button. Oh yeah, the V-Drummer is dope. I just started using it, especially if you need those acoustic drum sounds. The Virtual Drummer Deep. I mean, to just be able to grab fills like that, natural sounding fills and stuff are so hard to get. So, I think we've got a decent, um, Pre-chorus here. The Watcher Wesley says, how many camera angles do you have? Well, let's count them. We got the main cam. What's going on? Nice to see you here. We got the above cam. What's going on? Nice to see you over here. And we got the wide cam, which is a big webcam attached to the wall. Now, uh, there's also a camera right here that is not connected to the computer, uh, but nonetheless. And we got the Joe cam. He's saying, he's saying something out there. Wow. We got all the cams. All right. One quick thing to do here, though. That's what I want to do. I want to filter that in. I'm a fan of all the angles. Yeah, don't get me started on the combination of angles because we can do uh, me and screen, hands and screen, um, me and hands, this, this, we can do it all, friends. We got all the buttons. Okay, it's time to drop the chorus, obviously. What's interesting, I have to say, I think we're gonna have to carry that bass through to the hook because you notice it feels like a loss of low end when we get here. So we're going to have to make this chorus even more epic to make it live up to what the pre-chorus is building towards, I think. So that's at bar 33. We can paste that in. Yes. Let's not forget we're going to have to add effects and crashes. I'll be like you one day, teacher. I don't know if that's necessary. It's, it's like a little bit overkill, wouldn't you say? Have you always used light mode? Uh, more recently, I use light mode because I live in a very sunny apartment. The eye camera in implant. Yeah, I'll just put a GoPro on my head. Okay, I don't want this guitar during the chorus. that synth come in halfway through and then like I said I think I want the Reese bass to come in during the chorus as well we don't want to take things away and that gives us such robust low end that we definitely can't take it we'll definitely need more percussion elements here
Let's run this. One, two, three, four. Let me just play it in time. Baseline acquired. Guys, I just beat Halo Reach last night. Halo Reach, fantastic game. That's late. Why is it late? Go. No, she says that this song makes me want to skip along the board with ice cream, laughing at at the sky in a montage. We like that. Come on. Played this wrong. That's okay. We can fix. CJ Green says Halo is awesome. Yes, I only really played the originals one and two. So now I got an Xbox and I'm trying to play through the new ones or the ones after that. The ending of Reach, yeah, is is such a good ending. There's just so much action and so much happening on the screen all at once. Live stream breakdown. Ed said two computers. Listen, if you all want the live stream breakdown, I'm going to give it to you in one minute or less. Okay, here we go. Let me uh, kill this uh, sound here. That is just bothering me. Um, all right. The live stream setup breakdown. Here we go. We've got cameras, right? We've got this camera. You all saw. We got the front camera. We got a webcam up there. The two main cameras. Go into this thing on the wall here. Do you all see this thing on the wall? It's like a video mixer. The video goes in here. The camera is like via HDMI input. Plug into here. I have my sound running through an audio interface. The audio interface has two outputs. Well, it has more than two outputs, but it has my headphone output and it has a second headphone output that the audio from this interface goes to that mixer as well. So all the video and audio goes to the Roland VR1 HD video mixer. That is what I push the buttons on the wall that switch, switches angles, camera angles. That is connected. Oh, and by the way, it's the two cameras plus my laptop, HDMI out from the laptop into the video mixer as well. So everything you see goes into the video mixer. Everything you hear goes into the video mixer. That gets plugged into a PC, which is off camera, which is running OBS. And OBS is what I use to switch scenes. So if I was gonna say, go take a break, I'll be right back. I'll use this stream deck right here to switch to a different scene. Okay, be right back. So that's how I go to start and screens and my main, this, this screen, which is the video mixer. Then you hit go live in OBS and you're good to go and hope nothing goes wrong. But that is my uh, minute explanation of the stream setup. It is quite the situation to get everything all squared away and working. But we didn't come in here for a streaming tutorial. We came in here to make some music. So let's hear what the music we made sounds like. The YouTube award, they give out creator awards for um, subscriber milestones. So that award is for 100,000 subscribers. I, 
Uh, do you see Master Chief in Halo Reach? I don't remember seeing him. I think Captain Key says, do we need to wake him up or something like that? Okay, this is another instance where I think V-Deep will come in handy because we need some energy. Hmm. That's what I want, like a ride symbol. Let's see if the ride symbol makes sense here. So what I'll do is I'll take this drum pattern here. We'll lay it right there. And we will, we might even put this on its own track. All right, go away, plug in window. Um, let me hear this. That's ride, that's stepped hi-hat, which we don't need. That's snare, and that's that. Yeah, so what I'm actually gonna do is duplicate this track because I'll, the tom fills and the ride are just two different things. We don't need, those being on the same track is just gonna cause me problems. Like, let me just get rid of all the low end there. and add more reverb to them. And maybe even kill a little bit of high end. See? Okay, the other thing we need now is crash. We need a big old crash which we'll be able to find easily because I've been just doing this all the time. Oh, hello. Is that the one I want? Probably not. Could be that one. That one has a kick on it, so I don't want it. That's like a marching band crash. Let me see if I can make this one work even though it's super soft. Put it on its own audio track. What happened there? I think if that one's gonna be there, it needs to be layered with another one. Actually, I believe cashmere. A couple crashes here. Drums. Where are the symbols? I think there's a good crash. Okay, I thought I had more crashes from the cashmere kit, but I guess not. I mean, maybe that trap one will work. Let me just hear how it sounds. Doesn't sound bad. Push one to the right, push one to the left. Group them together. Bring the total volume down. And we'll do like risers and stuff. How to structure songs. I recommend you rewind because that's literally what we've been doing for maybe the past 20 minutes or something. We first made a loop and now we've been just building it out, structuring it. Think about the, stru the structure you need. We have intro. That's what these first eight bars are. Hi, Rashane. have verse. I'm gonna pull back on that synth lead for that first half. Introduce it here. It's a little crunchy guitar strumming in some part. Yeah, I would probably layer in some live guitar for that. But not today, not on stream. Pre-chorus section. Like that needs to be louder. I 
think that lead can come in for the whole hook. And I think what it is is we need one more layer for the hook. One more riffy kind of thing. But yeah, it it's probably could be some, it could be some uh, guitar, like strum guitar. Okay, so then this isn't that hard because typical pop song structure is not rocket science. We go from chorus to verse. But, alas, there probably needs to be some buffer in between these two. Let's figure out what that buffer is. And then from there, a lot of the work is already done. It's just coming up with a verse. Okay, so I'm just gonna imagine this come out of the chorus da, da, da. okay second verse comes in here I just hear it in my head that's all you have to do imagine the song already exists and hear it in your head that's how you unlock like your instinctual like thinking oh it's even sooner it's here Boom. And we'll do this clap figure again. Here. Boom. So obviously we can add some synth here. Something. Something will go there. Bendy like that, just a kind of a nothing too cheesy though. It could for now. I'm just gonna put a chord there because I think it could be something cool, but I don't want to uh, rush it. And so it's just a placeholder. All right, that's easy. I'm duplicating this so that I can do this. Classic. Here we go. Oh, that's wrong. I want to do this. The music school teacher said, used to say how you could play something without being able to hum. Yeah, humming it first is easy. Well, it's what you should be able to do with your idea. Because that means it's like a real idea, right? Okay, we're gonna go no guitar here. And then to mix the second verse up here, right at that bar, we're gonna kill this backbeat. Let's gonna keep that kick for a moment. We're going to do something different here. Options or alt in doing this. So now, actually, this is a good instance. I can't put you all in my brain. You all can't hear what I'm hearing in my mind, but I'm literally referencing one of the other one of the songs on the reference playlist for this part. So a lot of what I hear to happen here involves vocals 
So I'm already hearing like a vocal on top of this. I guess just two of those is fine. Dun, 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 ga, ta, ta. And then we should do a crash on this downbeat. Oops, let's extend those. All right, and we're always trying to back our crashes with kicks. Da, 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 da. All right, I like this um, figure, so what I actually want to do is put that on toms. Insert an empty MIDI clip there, and I can play this as MIDI. Just checking the different hits. Uh, played terribly, but good enough for what we're doing right now. I might just take out that kick there. Oh, I'll talk about the guitar in a minute. Just give me one second to record this. One, two, three, four. And let's maybe quantize and double that up. Okay, I don't want those crashes to end like that. So I want them to have a nice long tail that fades normally. Cool. Uh, the guitar, people are asking, it is a complete control or I mean a contact band guitar sounds really good I put some chorus on it though cool beta x says you look a bit different it could be the hair all right I'm just working that little second verse variation again So obviously the drums and the bass work in concert. So it doesn't make sense to have that bass line there. So we really want them to sync up on those hits. And I might even change the chords there. Yeah, I'm gonna change the chords in that moment. That doesn't have to change, this has to change. So I wanna to go to a two chord, which is an E minor. All right, and I have to sync those crashes up with that. Um, let me get down to an E, unfold this, sorry. And that's E major right now. We want it to be E minor. That's not even E, e major. We need E, good. E, G, B is what we need. We don't need the minor. I mean, we don't need the seven. All right. And I am going to kill that chord. So the whole reason I'm doing this, maybe this seems a little bit tedious, but all I'm doing right now is adding just a simple variation to the second verse so it's not exactly a cut and paste replica. Good. 
good and I'm just lining up these rhythms. So that amounted to changing the chords and now I'm gonna align the bass line. One more time. That was the wrong note. One more time. Bruh. Point of no return. And I'm just not going to play that last note because that bass doesn't come back in for a while. There we go. Um, Leonardo's glasses and beanies are the kind of things that really change a person's look in a way that isn't immediately obvious. Yeah. Yeah, that chord. So basically all I did was add a two chord in there, which we haven't heard yet in the song. So it's kind of nice there. It just goes something like, and then this is the typical chord progression. But then if I go from the G, which is the four to the two, it also resolves nicely to the one. Tap, tap, tap. The tambourine is okay. I just wonder if I can get a little bit of delay on it to give it a couple extra hits. Just a little bit of a more dense groove without it being like over the top. Hi, STK. Thank you for being here. Thanks for stopping in. Check out STK's member badge, everybody. All right. This is probably about uh, as far as I can get with this track in this current session. So I want to listen to it back at the top, but also want to throw the mastering chain on it because why not? Maybe put I'll put a couple of risers in there as well. Um, beat sketches master, beat sketches master. So this I'll, I'll definitely be looking to characterize the sound here, and give it a sort of eighties, not eighties, but like a slightly more vintage sound. It's gonna be louder, by the way. Thomas Martinez, thank you so much for the five. Thank you so much for the super chat. Is that bass MIDI? It is indeed. It sounds pretty nice, huh? Just taking a look at the drums at the moment. Getting a little 
red on my master, so all I want to do is just nudge things down a bit. Do I think this kind of group would fit FaceX? Probably not. So I'm just going to layer in a couple of these effect sounds, of course, because I think from there, really all I have to do is think about the bridge. That doesn't sound too bad. The key is finding the ones that don't sound too techno-y. Just literally grabbing these noises. Is this annoying for anybody yet? <laughs> Um, where's the uplifters? So here we'll use these to transition in and out of sections. I guess the thing that I'm looking for is a riser. A little too distinct. These are good ones though. Maybe. I don't know if that fits, but let's give this a shot and just try to lay some of these in. Obviously, the first one needs to be at the first verse. We need a downlifter there, but we will definitely need one here. Nope, it's here. Oh, what did I just do? All right, so I'm gonna wanna make some of these interisers. That one synth that has that noise on it, I'm gonna have to get out of here. Um, I'm out for now, it's late here. Thank you, Rainer, for chilling and hanging out in the stream. Hope you had fun. That's too much, but that has a place leading up to the chorus for sure. this where I can reverse this and that one that's not what I want to do uh, I want to go to audio effects reverb that one I'll put reverb on some of these will have reverb some of these will not have reverb this track is giving me, my parents made me go to summer camp and now I found my new BFF, so let's jump in the lake. Cool. We like that. We love the imagery. Watching your workflow is teaching me so much as a newer Ableton user. Glad I caught your stream. I'm glad you caught it too. Thank you. Just another one here. Subtler.
cool. Let's keep it going. So th these effects actually now we can just replicate. So that's bar 17. That's where the... All, right. All I need to do is copy these over. Probably add more of these later on, but this is good for now. Okay. Nope, we don't need that. All right, the last thing I want to do before we sign off today is just one quick other thing which is a couple track mutes. So I want to mute the tracks when they stop. Like that. All those synth chords hang over that bar line and I want them to totally cut there. Boom, cut that. Same thing with you. Just a hard cut. Cool. And now I just want to investigate this or whatever synth it is. This one. So do you all hear that? When that synth is not doing anything, it is making a lot of noise. We don't like that. Controls. I don't want it, but I also don't want to kill the brightness. Back to case, sustain release. No, we don't need that. Movement, timbre. All right, I'm not gonna mess with it too much, but I don't really understand in analog lab. How do I get to the whole synth? Help chat. How do I do it? This shouldn't be that difficult actually. To say like, okay, I'm on this sound, controls. That's the only controls I get. Keys, keys are there. Oh well, I'm stuck. My world says, what app do you use? Are you able to not? All right, anyway, we're not gonna be able to solve that issue today. Um, I'll solve it in the future. That also needs to happen here, cutting the tracks. So anything that's gonna be hanging over with a reverb or something, cut. You need to cut it. One as well. Turn it off. Turn off, turn off, turn off. This one as well. Turn it off. All right, let's listen from the beginning. And that is what we got today, my friends. What do you all think of this track? Give me your review. So far, it needs a bridge and then a final chorus, but then it's pretty close to done. Here we go. Build it up to that hook. Amelia says this track is dope. Made me stay up to 5 a.m. to watch the whole stream. Thank you, Amelia. I appreciate that. But I hope you get some rest. Rest is important. We already got the singer for this Nefertiti. I have a. This is specifically for an artist that I'm working with. If she likes it, hopefully. We 
don't need Katy Perry is what I mean to say. Andrew Gum says, what do you think about bundling Ableton project for songs you produce using only Ableton packs? I could do that potentially in the future. But sometimes I'm using BST so everybody doesn't have. Cool. And now I got to go study some bridges and see what I will do next. All right, everybody. That was a fun stream. That was, uh, we got a lot more done than I expected to get done. So thank you for hanging out uh, and joining me today. This was a fun track couple of things so if you're just here to hang and have a good time thanks if you're just here to watch the music production we're done with that so feel free to have a good day um, but thank you shout out to all the new members first of all thank you if you don't know if you want to support the channel and get something for yourself like a free sample pack join our discord channel or submit music for our bi-weekly track reviews every other week i should say become a member hit the join button join at the beginner tier like the VA the community tier you get access to the discord and you can submit music there's a track review stream this Saturday so just submit music you got to join before Saturday or on Saturday um, and to get a free sample pack join at the VIP tier and you can get haze for free with your membership and you can support this channel so if you've watched the tutorials or if you watch the performances or you enjoy the streams and they're like you feel like it's teaching you a lot and you want to do something to support me and make it so i can keep making stuff like this please hit the join button become a member of course not everybody can commit financially so just subscribing and turn on turning on notifications helps a lot as well i appreciate all of it we're here every thursday making music like this on Tuesdays we do a talk show and then like I said every other Saturday we do track reviews so thanks for being here hope you're having a good time hope you can go watch another video if you haven't yet go watch some of the music theory videos that are out and we got more projects in the works coming on this channel so that's it everybody hope you all have a good rest of your day a good night Eric says, keep up the good hair. I appreciate that. Shout out to Riley, my barber, who does watch the streams occasionally. Shout out to Barber Punks. Hit that like button on your way out. Thank you for the reminder, Never TV. Robin says, great stream. Thank you. If it was your first time here, I hope you had a good time. This was a lot of fun for me. Where's part three of music theory? Once a month, my friend, every month. Usually like the first week of the month, we'll be adding more. All right, I'll see y'all next time. This was a long one, but had a good time. For now, this has been Tatro. Have a good one.